Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. Can you feel the message? Did you hear the theme of the songs and the lyrics that were there? There's so much that can be said with music. Channeling is music. And the message is clear that there is not a puzzle before you, not anymore, but instead a reality that you can reach out and touch if you choose. And perhaps the music has softened your heart. And you might have a recognition, a realization that you are larger than you think. Tonight's channeling is simple, not long. I want to set the stage. I want to give you some history. I want to tell you the way it is. All of you assembled in this place in the shadow of a mountain would normally feel the energy of what we would call Gaia. Gaia is one of the attributes of the human being. It's allied with humanity. It speaks to humanity in a beautiful way. Nature by itself would be beautiful to you and you could sit and watch it and hear it speak to you. But here, oh, there's more. How do you explain the history of this place? Even within your lifetime, how do you explain the pilgrimage of those who would come to go up the mountain and just sit on the soil of the planet and put out their hands and just listen? How do we explain the, the energies that are felt there and have been for so long? That so many people have come by the tens of thousands just to sit and listen. There is more than meets the eye. And that is what we wish to speak of in a very elementary way, a simple way, perhaps repeating a story that some of you have heard before, but this one we want others to hear as well. I know where I am. All of the things that have taken place to this point is a setup for today, for tomorrow, for the future. And it is more profound than you know, more esoteric than you can believe. These things happen slowly and some of you are feeling them now. There is a beauty in the room and I want you to feel it. The messages of those of the day have all been that there is more here than meets the eye. It's more than a recalibration, much more. I want to take you back. In an ancient time, in the creation story that we have given so many times before, the beauty of it, the appropriateness of it, the love of it, where a system has existed in this galaxy it would allow literally for the extension of God within sentient beings. We have told you that this is the only planet of free choice. That one at a time in this galaxy, planets come online, you might say, to use your words not with a test 
not with a test. A test is something you pass or fail. No, it's an experience that you could do with what you choose. In order for this to work, humanity had to be seeded and changed from simple biology. You were ready. It wasn't that long ago. We told you. If you want to track it back to the very beginnings of Pleiadian involvement 200,000 years, not that long. If you want to track it back to really where the cultures began and humans started to shift and change, not that long, 30, 40,000, not that long. If you want to track back to what we want to speak of, when it was ripe and ready, for the first civilization that was uniquely isolated approximately 26,000 years. The Pleiadians came, dear ones, all over the planet and greeted you and seeded you and became part of you and they changed your DNA. This is the creation story. It is all over the planet. The indigenous have it. Ask them. Sometimes the extension of it, the metaphors of it, wind up in your scriptures. It is the same story, dear ones, that human beings standing ready, sentient, beautiful, evolved, were given the knowledge of dark and light. That is the creation story, and it came from the stars, and we have told you this before. It is not odd, it is not unusual, and you are not the first. The Pleiadians had what we would call a planet that was in ascension. They had discovered quantum energy. They knew how to get here in an eye flash. If you ever see a Pleiadian ship, I would like to tell you something. It's something they've designed because you wanted to see it. <laughs> They can be here in an eye flash. In an entangled state with one another, you can go anywhere instantly. And this is what you will eventually discover, for this planet is ready. It begins slowly, and it did with them. They had the same kind of history you did. I want you to know this. When parents go through their childhood, and they grow and they become mature. They find their partners and they have children. They impart upon their children their wisdom of what happened to them. And the Pleiadians, they had the history like you did. But after a very long time, when they had turned the same kind of corner you did, when they had created peace on their planets, there's three of them, They came together and found you, the next planet of free choice. We've told you before, they had their seed parents, and their seed parents had their seed parents. If you want to take a look at your grandparents and your parents of the grandparents, you're talking millions of years before you had life as you know it on the planet. You are the new kids on the block. Life has not been here that long, and you know that. You're new. All of the history of the planet has happened so quickly. You've gone through the machinations of immaturity. You've come and gone almost destroying yourselves four times, rebuilding, destroying, rebuilding, destroying until it comes to this, the fifth rebuild, only you didn't destroy. The prophecy said you would, and you did not. I am crying, I came here 24 years ago, right after the harmonic convergence, right after that, which was the potential, you would pass the marker, which you did. But I want to tell you the history. Lemuria founded by the Pleiadians was like a pressure cooker because no one could escape. 
And so unlike some of the other civilizations on the planet which were also being developed through Lemurians and through Pleiadians. Now did you hear that right? You see I'm going to tell you something you haven't heard before. I would like to give you a picture that you won't understand. You have heard conflicting information even from me. But it doesn't conflict. Only in 3D does it conflict. Who is in the mountain? Lemurians or Pleiadians? <laughs> I'm going to give you the answer and how it works. There was a special kind of human being on Lemuria, not necessarily that advanced in certain ways not culturally advanced beginners in human culture they had dynasties instead of democracies but they had a different kind of dimensionality than you do for their starting DNA was at 50 percent that is fair and from there it could go anywhere you could allow it to go upwards and the higher the percentage of functional DNA the higher the involvement of consciousness in the sentient being human nature is variable dear ones it is not static you were told it's static it changes with civilizations which decide on their own to enhance their DNA to a higher functional level and in that functionality it opens dimensionality and when that starts dear one everything changes it's a door that opens and you cannot close it and you are about to open it this is year one the Pleiadians made sure that the Lemurians had functional DNA to 50%. Now this you won't understand. But a functional DNA of 50% is more than life extension. It is life within life. The Pleiadians lived within the Lemurians and you don't know how that works. You will. How is it possible for DNA to change to a certain degree where you're not yourself. Do you mean to say that my soul was not my own soul, that I was interfered with some other soul from another planet and we were in there together somehow? Yeah. <laughs> and you'll say, well, I'm not sure I like that. <laughs> because you've not experienced it, not really, not now. But some of you did. And you know what it feels like. You strive for that. You want to know what you're missing? That's what you're missing. Why is it that you sit and say, God, there's got to be more. Fill me up. There's got to be more. And you know there is. Lemurian, old soul, you know there is. That's what you're missing. You're about to break out of 3D. It may take generations. It doesn't matter. You're going to be here, old soul. It doesn't matter. You may not look like you do now, but you're going to be here. You're going to participate in all of it. All of it. It's beautiful. Ask a Pleiadian. It's beautiful. When Lemuria was finished and it was time to exit, the canoes took to the ocean. And they were Lemurians with accompanying Pleiadian multidimensional consciousness. I told you you wouldn't understand. This is who they were. And they went so many different places on the planet. The currents took them all over the ocean. They touched base on so many of the continents. South America, the islands on the way to and from the coasts of the United States and others. They went inland and they saw Shasta 
Now here's where it gets good. The part of the Lemurian which was multidimensional made some decisions based upon what might happen on the planet by design. They put themselves into the mountain, what you would call a time capsule, not to them. You see, time is not the same for them. Are they Lemurian or are they Pleiadian? And the answer is yes. It's beautiful. It is not odd. It is not strange. Imagine the love of one race that would come and infuse you with their divinity. Change your DNA. Fuse chromosomes two and three together so you are nothing like any other mammal on the planet and move forward and sit and wait. I want to introduce you to a woman that I wish to honor on this stage tonight, Aurelia Louise Jones. Aurelia, I want you to come and sit at my feet. And I want the seers in the room to watch the energy because she's here. She's been waiting for this moment. And the years where she didn't feel good didn't matter. Not now. Because she's here. When she came to this place, this woman saw them. In an older energy, it's very difficult when you see the things, not to 3 eyes them. She met Adamus. He told her about Telos, the name of the city. And all of these things are metaphors. They're beautiful. Louise, I want to honor you right now for publishing the information that today we can look back on and say, you were right, dear. And everything revolves around what you said and what's going to happen. And we thank you. Time to honor the forerunners of this information. For she told us what Adama said. Yes, Louise expected a city, a real city, a 3D city. Yes, she expected to see them in corporeal fashion because this was an old energy attribute that does not metaphorize things they look so real and they did to her she saw them and reported them in the Telos books you can find today everywhere Louise you were right they were always there there is a prophecy she said that Adamus told her the one who was delegated to give the messages from the mountain is still here. There is an excitement happening in this place because it's year one. The Pleiadians, they remember their history. They've written it down. They celebrate it. There are certain times of their years where they celebrate their passing over into a new energy, passing over into a promised land. The metaphor of the city on the hill, a time that those spiritual said might happen would expect it to happen should you get to a place where you could pass over an old energy, a slavery to conquering and hatred that's going to change. Slow it is, dear ones, but you have passed this marker. Now, Aurelia, what did Adamus tell you? That there'd come a day when the Pleiadians would come out of the mountain and they would walk the streets of Shasta. This is the metaphor, do not be confused by it, that says there's a time when the energy of creation would be allowed to develop in a multidimensional form and be part of you again. 
to get messages to you, slowly to be part of your evolution, slowly for you to feel them come back inside you and change human nature. Are you you or are you going to be them? And the answer is yes. You will know what I talk about. I want you to ask Elijah something. Elijah walked into the field and he ascended by choice. He ascended. Now, oh, here's the question. Elijah, where is your dead body? Are you dead or are you alive? Yes. <laughs> you, dear human being, in a three-dimension corporeal form of singularity, do not understand these answers. But I'm telling you, if you look and read between the lines and look in the cracks, you're going to ask yourself, Elijah, he is like the Pleiadians. He's not dead. There was no body. He just changed dimensionality. And so did the Lemurians who went in the mountain. That dimensionality is going to be shared very slowly with you through the time capsules that we have talked about, through inventions that are start to be given to you, through awarenesses, through pineal tones, through facilitations. All manner of things to be delivered to you over the next two to three generations are coming. You see really what you started. I want you to honor this woman. It's her time. I told my partner, go back to Shasta. Go back to Shasta on year one and honor her and honor those in the mountain. Some of you have been up there and felt them. There is excitement in the mountain, for they know what you've done, what you're going through, and also the issues of recalibration. They know. Some of you are not comfortable in your skin. They know. They went through it. You thought you knew what the new age was. You thought you knew what energy was. You thought you were just fine with it, and then suddenly everything shifted. That's as it should be. You cannot remain in 3D, in an old energy, feeling the same way, doing the same things. Crying, when is it going to get back to normal? It isn't. Normal is going to change. This is a message filled with love. If the Pleiadians are your loving, multi-dimensional parents from the stars just like they had theirs if this is true dear ones can you feel what they must feel right now having waited so long for you to awaken to the knowledge of the reality that Louise brought you what if you were parents and had to wait that long for your kids to wake up some of you feel you have And when they did, what would you say to them? When they recognized you as parents, as the loving people that you are to them, giving birth to you, and they didn't even know it. Can you imagine the reunion? I want you to, I want you to feel this, Mom, Dad. That's what's going to go on in the mountain. When you, when you go up there, you're, you're looking for them. You're not looking for them. They're looking for you. There's a reunion here, and it's a multidimensional one, and you may feel odd, and it may not feel exactly the same, and you may wonder what even happened. That's the love of God in a system that is here to stay. Finally, let me just say, yet again, over and over, crying, why do you repeat so much? Because you're not listening. Don't measure your growth by what you see on the news. The news will change eventually. I want you to look in the cracks at the good things that are on this planet that are developing the joy, the peace, the young people not wanting to repeat what their elders have said they should repeat in hatred. I want you to look at these things clearly, esoterically, and see the truth. 
things are changing. The, the ones who are invested in the old energy, in the, in the lack of integrity in all the systems you have, will try to pull you backwards. And we have told you this over and over. And that's what's going to get your attention, not the good stuff. And some of you are going to wring your hands and say, it's not true, it's not happening. And I'll say, just relax and let it be. They haven't got a chance. This is what I want you to know. The old energy, what you would call the darkness of the way things in a lower consciousness work, will fight you. And they don't have a chance. Not anymore. I never told you that before now because the potentials were you had to pass the marker before I could tell you they don't have a chance. And now they don't. Yes, you control your own future. Yes, there is no predestination, but this snowball is rolling. And it's collecting new human beings, new old souls who are awakening every single day. How many of you are here who have never been to a meeting like this before? Don't raise your hands, I already know. <laughs> and what brings you here to watch this spooky stuff? man in the chair channeling an entity from the other side of the veil with a funny name that nobody ever heard of and yet you're here now do you feel what's happening in the room we're leaving now we are infusing the room however with an entourage that's going to stay until the meetings are done until the tones are all sung. And I want you to feel us. I want you to feel their arms around you. Let this be the beginning of the infusion of the Pleiadians in the mountain coming out to this auditorium. I want you to meet your parents. Aurelia, look what you started. This is our message, the beginning message of the conference. I want you to feel, I want you to truly understand the beauty, the simplicity, and the reality of what took place. The design begins now, and you're part of it, old soul. I want you to feel it and discern the truth of it. Don't just take my word for it. Don't just say yes, because around you there are others who are saying yes. I want you to go alone and say to your own selves, is this really true? And let the cells in your body who know all about the Pleiadians vibrate with chills to say, finally you ask. <laughs> and that is the message of the day. Go from this place ready ready to change and so it is